Hi everyone, welcome to the KOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to create tasks to run specific tests in Cucumber, right? So in, in the previous video, we already learned how we can do that, uh, how we, we can tag specific tests to just run, to just run those specific tags. But now we need to be able to run that systematically. Last time we did it uh, manually, but now we need to create something that is going to automatically know what we want. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the, to receive the notifications of my next videos. And I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous ones so you can keep it up. Right. So this is what we we have so far. We we already create some tags called sanity. So we have a couple of tags called sanity, sanity here as well on the user sanity and on the store sanity. So this is how we separate our sanity ones. And in the last video, I showed how you can run only those. And I'm, I'm going to post the links for the previous one so you can uh, see exactly how we did that. We do. We are going to do this now through Gradle, right? So Gradle uses Groovy and I, create, and I can create tasks on it. So I can say task and I can uh give the name of my task so it's sanity test and i can give it like a type test so we already know that it needs to run tests and now i can set some definitions right on last video we created an environment variable so we did we did export cucumber flags sanity so this is what we did right so we're going to do the same thing we're going to, but here I'm now going to say this is the environment variable and it's going to be named cucumber filter tags and it's going to filter only the tag sanity, right? That's it, right? So if I do gradle clean sanity test. We're going to execute. I can open my report and it only executed the sun. You see, sanity, sanity, again, sanity, and the last one, sanity as well. So everything was executed. Oh, this one here, I miss sanity as well. Awesome, right? So now we are able to run the tasks, uh, the, the tests only with Sanity. But does it make sense to uh, create an environment variable? Because if we think about it, I'm running in Java, like Groovy, it's in my, in my project, the JVM, not in Java, JVM. And I want Java to use that information. And I'm from my JVM, I'm creating an environment variable on a Unix to be used on Java, which is JVM as well. So I can, and I could, and I should, uh, from my Groovy communicate straight to Java. And why did I show you environment variable? Because this is going to be very important when we create our CI. When we have our CI, our CI can is going to be running on a Unix computer, right? So I can create an environment variable from my CI that's going to be used for Java. But if I'm right on Groovy on the JVM, doesn't really make sense, right? So the other option that we can do is called, we can create another task called regression test, right? Because we now, We can run the sanity, and now I can say I want a system property, right? And now I'm going to give the name of the property. Since this is on the JVM, I'm not going to use this pattern here because we are using all caps snake case because this is a Unix variable pattern. We are going to be using Java pattern for system properties, which is everything lowercase separated by dot. Filter tags. And now, this is the magic part. 
Now I need to tell which tags that I want. Right? Regression is everything that I have except some specific tests, right? Uh, actually, regression is everything. But in our case, I don't want to duplicate my test, right? So if I already ran the sanity, I don't need to run the sanity again on my regression. Right? That's a waste of time. So if you take a look at the Cucumber runner, we already separated some of the tasks, right? We, we, when we run the tags, we say, I do not want the, I do not want to run. I don't want to run the whip, which is work in progress. And I also don't want to run the quarantine because the test can be flaky, can be the passing, failing sometimes. Um, and I just want to mark it as to be ignored. And I can check later whenever I have time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy here. And I'm going to say, I don't want to run neither my whip, my whip, neither my quarantine. And I also do not want to run the sanity because it was already ran. So this one is only executing the sanity. And this one is executing everything that is not whip quarantine, and sanity, right? All right, so let's clean and do regression test. I'm going to refresh. Now he ran everything except those which is the pet store, right? which is the animal and the pet, because the pet, uh, the animal, sorry, the, uh, this one is sanity, this one is sanity, this one is sanity, and this one is sanity. I can tag this one as whip, and I can tag this one as quarantine, and I can re-execute everything. Nothing was executed, right? Because it should ignore everything from my regression. But this is what we want, the pet and the animal. Right, so great. So now we can have two full features being executed. So if you take a look at our build grader again, awesome, we have these this uh, instruction here, which is to run the Docker Compose uh, when we try to spin up the test, right? So we want to spin up the application, and uh, we already talked about this. I'm going to sh uh, post the video so you can watch how we created this. But basically, is before running the test, spin up the application. And this is very important because it can be a new person joining the team, and you can have the instruction of to run the test, run this tag, run this task, and that's it. It's going to figure out everything by itself. Uh, you can come on, uh, you can come in, in the work in the beginning of the day. You are not necessarily going to set up everything. You you are still checking emails, you are you have a meeting, you are going to get coffee, that kind of stuff. So you, you don't need to set up everything, but just run that test, right? Um and I mean, you can run that even in a server as well, right? So that's that's how it works, the Docker Compose uh, dependency. What I'm going to show you is how that, so let it spin up down, it spin it, it spin it down, Docker Compose down. So it's going to delete and stop. So one of the things that I can do now is I can do Gradle. Uh, and I can mark this as a dependency, right? So for these two tests as well, sanity and regression. So when I say sanity test, sorry, this needs to be below the definition of the task. See, Docker Compose is going to execute in the Compose. It's waiting. And now it's executing the test. And now it's shutting down the application and removing the application. I can say regression 
test as well. Okay. Typo here. It's going to do the same thing. Compose up. Wait. Execute the test and shut it down. So we are talking about how, how long did we do it? 13 seconds and this one, 12 seconds. Right? But it, when you are actively de developing this, it does not make sense every time you spin up the application, spin down the application. It's, you, you are wasting time, right? You, you are you know, in, your, in your daily activity, you already have the application run. You don't actually need to spin up and spin down, spin up, spin down. So what we're going to do is for regression and sanity, these two is going to be used in the CI. So we don't need these dependencies, this dependence here, because on, on Circle CI, we're going to use another strategy. Uh, but we do need to have this task, right? Uh, if I leave this task here and I execute the Cucumber Runner, Cucumber Runner is a test. You're going to see that it's going to spin out, spin up the application, it's creating the application, spinning up the application, it's executing the test, and it's spinning down the application. I also don't need to wait that as well because it's doing everything out this one uh, uh, you, uh, less than 14 seconds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another task and I'm going to call API test. Type test and that's it. And instead of uh doing the, this dependency for the test i'm going to do, i'm going to do the dependency for the api test so gradle api test require api test oh sorry it's task not test there you go so compose up Compose, it's executing the test. Compose down. This time it's executing everything, right? So it's executing everything because I'm not filtering out. But 13 seconds because I'm executing the test one. If I do just test, it's going to fail because the application is not up. So darker, compose up D. Let me wait. The application is already running. It is already running. Now I can do Gradle test. Instead of taking 13 seconds, it's going to take five seconds. So eight seconds less. So, but Rafael, it's eight seconds too much. It's pretty fast. Yes, but you're going to be executing these dozens of times a day, right? So if you multiply dozens times eight is going to be a long time that you're going to be waiting if you also sum it up with the week of this or the month is an incredible amount of time that you're wasting and you don't need it you don't need to be wasting that time so now we have the api test just to have these dependencies to make it easier we have the sanity test the regression test which is going to be uh, using our Circle CI, and the test itself, it's it's free because I can also run from my Cucumber Runner, and I don't need to all I know I don't need to be waiting for it to spin it up, spin down, because I freed the test uh, task from from these dependencies. So this is basically what I wanted to show you. In the next video, we're going to be uh start uh figuring out the ci and this is very important right having this because regardless of which ci you're using travis ci circle ci uh github actions uh GitLabs, uh jenkins all of those are using a unix machine unix server underneath it which means that you can execute any of these tasks as long as you know where you're going to put where you're going to call these tasks it doesn't really matter, right? Because this is on our code and this is the beauty of it, right? So thank you for watching.
If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next video. And if you like it, give the thumbs up. And it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. Right? So thank you. See you on next video.